excited to welcome in high performance junior coach Frank Green. Frank, I really appreciate you joining today. Thank you. So I like to just dive what I like to call just right into the conversation. And I know you have a, a rich and robust background, but was curious to know, how did you get started into tennis? That's a good question. Um, so I got started into tennis uh, because my parents were really into sports. And uh, my mom was a really good uh, lacrosse player and mm -hmm. field hockey player. And uh, she turned out to be a pretty good coach. She won three national championships uh, teaching lacrosse at Temple University. And then uh, my dad was really into uh, track and field where he was a, uh, an alternate for the Olympic trials. Um, he went to Tuskegee on a full scholarship. So we were a sport oriented family. And um, my sister uh, got into tennis through uh, a summer camp um, where they, they offered uh, tennis and uh, somebody told her she was good and I always wanted to follow her. So, um, you know, whatever she did, I did. And uh, that's pretty much how uh, I got into the sport of tennis. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. And I understand. And, and even let me take a step back. There's a lot of what I like to call tennis entrepreneurs now. I mean, I think with the pandemic or what was born out of the, the pandemic was, you know, this a growing sport of tennis. So with that came a lot of coaches starting to do their own thing. And I know you recently um, are, are on your own as a high performance tennis coach. And I just wanted to talk to you or could you talk a little bit about some of the challenges that comes with that? Yeah. Um, you know, everything is, is now in, in your hands um, where you, you know, you could, uh, you know, say uh, management is, uh, is did, did this or management did that. Uh, you are the management. Um, you become the brand. So um, there's a lot of responsibilities that go along with it. But, you know, I feel that, um, you know, some of the challenges is also, uh, you know, the color of my skin. Um, you know, feeling like I have to overperform to, to feel valued um, at, at times. And, and um, you know, uh, I feel like, you know, working um, at, you know, a number of settings, um, you know, allowed, you know, me to, it, it kind of forced me uh, to be confident in my knowledge. And um, my experience has allowed me to connect with different people and different backgrounds. Yeah. And I mean, you just hit on one thing that I think is so real. And I don't know if you experienced this in Philly, but, you know, me at Toss has been running out of Chicago. To your point, I always feel like I have to be great, not just better than the next guy. I got to be great. Everything from customer service, how I teach, what I wear, it just has to be better because, you know, if not, they're going to perceive me the wrong way. And I, and I think one of the things that frustrates me is, you see these mediocre, and I'll just point it out, you see mediocre uh, white coaches and um, doing it the wrong way, and it's not going to help the game, but they can get away with it. I can't get away with being mediocre. And I mean, that's just the reality. I'm not sure how it is in Philly, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably the same way. Yeah, um, you know, we have to hold ourselves to a higher, um, you know, uh, level of excellence. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to it and, and, um, I'm up for the challenge. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, me as a little kid, my parents always told me I had to be better than the best. Right. And I, I just think that's, that's true. And that's how I run my businesses for everything I do from replying to emails to, like I said, what I wear, I just want it to be that much better. So when they come in contact with me, they're going to remember you know, what I bring to the table and they won't forget it. Um, and I think that's, that's important as well. And as you, on another note, and as I transition, as you think about game growth, you know, mm -hmm. one thing I mentioned a few minutes ago is that the game is, is growing out of control, right? Um, from your perspective and, and specific, specifically speaking about the Philly market, have you seen that, that game growth? And also, what do you think it's going to take to keep people in the sport of tennis? Yeah, I have seen the great the game grow. Um, I think there's so much more room for uh, for the game to grow. Um, I think it starts with accessibility and exposure um, at a very young age. Um, 
you know, bringing tennis and other non-traditional sports to communities of color will definitely expand the game. Um, but I think uh, also the keys are talent identification um, mm -hmm. at a very young age, um, it, you know, identifying uh, a, is this kid uh, athletic? Um, can they run? Can they jump? Um, and then, you know, giving them uh, the knowledge that tennis is a sport that they can, they can pursue if they, if they choose to, other than, you know, basketball or football or baseball, um, you know, identifying that, it, you know, there are non-traditional sports out there that, you know, can create opportunities. And then I think the second thing, along with Talent ID, is um, letting uh, people know that, you know, tennis is a lifelong sport where if you play baseball or you play basketball, there's, there's usually a expiration date, you know, that you can play with your, with your, you know, your friends. But, you know, in tennis, if you're 65 years old, 70, 75 years old, you can still play, you know, tennis and, and, and you know, doubles and, and different things like that. Yeah, definitely. And I think one of the things you hit on that is so important is how do we, you know, how do we get tennis into communities that will never have, never would have had the chance to play the game. And I think that's a big part of, you know, what I want to do is for me, I just want to give back to the game that has given me so much. And part of that, yes, you want to make a living and you, you need to make a living, but it's about how do you, how do you give back and, and give more to those communities? And to your point, you know, as much as I like basketball, even now I can't go out and hoop. I would love to go out and hoop and run up and down the court, but I can't, I might pull a hammy and then I'm out of tennis. Right. But I guarantee you, I'll be 75 or 77 or 80, you know, swinging away with my big lefty ball on the tennis court. Right. Because it's just that lifelong sport. And I think that's important that you hit on that. Um, another thing that I, I wanted to talk about that I felt was, you know, really important. And I touched on a little earlier, but it's just this, this mindset of tennis entrepreneur and I feel as though many people have started to see during the pandemic that why, yes, you can go and work for a club. There's a much more lucrative opportunity, especially for us black coaches, you know, figuring out how to do your own thing, because in essence, we are the pool, right? If you go to many clubs, you see they have some great head pros and they're people of color, but they could do that and more if they were on their own. So what is your what is your take on just seeing more tennis black entrepreneurs in the future? Yeah, I think it's, it's very important. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, uh, mostly uh, most of my career, uh, I've worked for various tennis facilities where I learned tremendous amount of, uh, about coaching and about the business side. So I, I think that, um, it's not a bad thing to work for a club. Um, for me personally, uh, you know, I was very limited um, uh, at this point in my career. I was very limited in, in my flexibility and my creativity um, to work with high performance junior tennis players. So, you know, that's why, um, you know, I branched out and, 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 and now I'm in, in doing my own thing. But I think that um, before that happens, you have to have the knowledge, you have to have the experience. And, you know, working for not just one club, but maybe a few clubs before you uh, you go out and do your own thing, uh, I think is um, is vital. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you said that. Well, um, I totally don't mean to say, you know, come out of college and start your own thing. I think on that note, one of the things, especially the, the young, I'll call them the younger generation thinks is like, Hey, I'm going to graduate high school. I'm going to graduate college. I'm just going to start my own business. But I think you do need, you need guidance. You need mentorship and you need people to help you, you know, learn certain things, right? Because no matter how much your business brings in, if you don't know how to do the little things well, your business is going to fail. And I think, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you was in terms of mentorship, how important has mentorship been for you you know, as a coach and how do you look to give that same mentorship back to, you know, the, the up and coming uh, future of the sport? Uh, yeah, I think mentorship is huge. Um, it allows you not to make uh, the same mistakes maybe somebody else made. 
Um, you know, it allows you to listen and, and hear different experiences from people who, who've been in your shoes uh, for, for uh, a, a, new, a number of years. Um, and it also, uh, you know, you can call somebody, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you can talk, you can, uh, you know, kind of relate to somebody. If, if, with, with, without that, it's, it's very difficult to uh, make rational decisions without talking with people that you trust. So I think having uh, a, a mentor uh, or a few mentors that have um, a lot of experience and have gone through the same um, situations that you may have or, or can give you some insight is, is uh, crucial in making good decisions. Yeah, one of the things that I wanted to, as I think about mentorship, and I think you're totally right, mentorship is super important. And a lot of times people think they know everything, but in actuality, they need to get a mentor to help them along the way. But I'm always curious from your perspective, like, as you think about building out your career now and what that looks like, you know, what goals do you have and, and where do you want to take your your tennis career now? Yeah, I mean, the goal right now is, is um, you know, to slowly expand, um, you know, but right now we're, we're focused on um, personalized uh, training, which is basically um, private lessons. Um, I do a few uh, clinics here and there, but really diving into the different aspects of the game and, um, and, and, and constantly learning um, the technical side of it, the tactical side of it, the, the physical, the, the kind of the footwork side of it, um, and, you know, the mental side of it, and also the competitive side, um, you know, periodization as far as tournaments, un understanding, you know, the different uh, workloads. Um, are we practicing for two weeks? Are we, are we, you know, how many tournaments are we playing each, each year? Um, you know, understanding and kind of developing that and kind of having a boutique, um, you know, versus a department store concept. Um, so, you know, 10 to 15 players that I have right now and really uh, focusing in. One of the things you said that was super important that I don't know if a lot of coaches really think about these days is the fact that you're still learning. And I think such a big piece of continuing to elevate as a coach is just continuing to learn and continuing to grow and, and try to find new tricks up your sleeve. It's kind of like, the same kids usually play with you every year, but it, but what you do can't be the same. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like that's, that's super important. Um, one of the things, and this was last question I had for you that I really wanted to ask you as you think about, you know, well, two questions, one, as you think about your goals for the future, what does that look like? And two, what advice would you give to, um, a young African-American coach coming up? What would you advise them to do? you know, as they're looking to get into the sport and or start their career in tennis? Yeah, I'll start off with the, with the second question. Um, you know, if, if you're looking to get into the sport of tennis as far as coaching, um, you know, I think it's very important that uh, just because you are a good player does not mean that you, you're a good coach or, or will be a good coach. I think you really have to be a student of the game. Mm -hmm. and, um, and really, you know, like I touched on before, is really uh, connect yourself with the, the technical, the tactical, the physical, the mental, and the competitive side of, of it. And also, um, you know, learn the business. Uh, because if you don't know the business, you're always gonna get taken advantage of. So, um, you know, understanding how much a court costs, understanding, you know, if you have, uh, you know, the various aspects of, you know, running a business, you know, what are the components, um, you know, uh, growing, just always growing, always thinking about how can I grow, not, not uh, you know, how can I get the best out of, um, you know, how can I make the most money by, you know, going over here and going over there? No, understand the business. Um, so that's what I would uh, strongly recommend as and. And, and also, you know, uh, you know, going back to what, what we talked about earlier, which is a, a mentor, 
So I think those two aspects are, are very important. And uh, your first question um, was as far as my goals. Uh, you know, again, it's, 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 to, it's to grow um, first as a, uh, as a coach, uh, you know, and, 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 and uh, try to do things more efficiently. I think that would be a goal of mine. Um, efficiency, um, time management, and uh, being able to get the thing, get the same thing done in a short amount of time. So if I'm working on somebody's forehand and I, I was able to, you know, correct some things and it took, you know, three or four months, you know, maybe, you know, uh, trying to do it in maybe one month, um, you know, how can I, how can I get better in that way? Um, so, you know, and, and, and expanding my business. Um, I think that's also another goal. I'm talking to, um, trying to do some partnerships with different uh, clubs. Um, you know, we're, we're here in Philly, so you kind of need a, uh, you know, indoor backup, you know, for half, for half the year. So, uh, you know, looking to uh, expand the brand and, and, and into different uh, indoor facilities um, in case there's inclement weather. Yeah, I think I think that's. I mean, you you said a you said a ton of things there that I that I think is really good. The the one thing I want to hit on is the getting taken advantage of, and I think I'm not sure if this happened to you, but I'm sure at some point, you know, I definitely was taken advantage of um, teaching for way lower than I ever should have, and and people just kind of like going with the flow when it came to that. So I think part of that is knowing your worth and knowing what you bring to the table. And then to your point, um, just the business side is like, you always have to kind of be thinking ahead. Like you, although it's, you know, the weather's breaking and it's nice and Philly, you're, you're constantly like, okay, what am I going to do in the winter? Or what do I do when it rains? Or cause it's going to happen. So if you can proactively plan for those things from a business perspective, you're going to be in good shape. And I think overall you'll see success. I, I, one thing I always say is, there never, there's always going to be challenges when it comes to what we do, whether um, COVID now is always a big challenge. What do you do with that? Mass, no mass. But um, I think if you, you know, constantly make the right decisions, you're going to put yourself in the best position to be successful. So super, super good, super good wisdom there. Um, that's it. Those are all the questions I have for you. Um, okay. Where, where can everybody check you out on social? Where can we see your programming? What's your, what's your handles? Uh, so on Instagram, it's, uh, it's uh, fgreen8084. And then on Facebook, um, you know, just look up my name, uh, Frank, Frank Green. And, um, you know, the, the website's coming soon. We have T-shirts. Um, <laughs> I hope I can get one of those. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so... You know, we uh, we're definitely expanding. We're still early, um, so you know the website's com coming soon. Frank Frank Green Tennis uh, dot com, and and uh, you know a lot of different things coming soon. So, yep, that's good. That's good. Well, again, thanks for taking the time. All the best, and man, I, this has been great. I think you you had so many good nuggets during this during this conversation. I can't wait for for other people to see it. 